Can we give God a shout of praise? Come on, can we clap our hands and thank God for our being here tonight? We want to welcome you to our 24th uh, church anniversary. It would not have been what it is and what it will be without you that are here tonight. And so I want to thank every pastor, every church that is here represented, every worshiper, every intercessor, every apostle. We thank you for coming out in the rain and the cold to help us celebrate. Can you give yourself a hand uh, this afternoon? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask you to take those coats off if you can. We, 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 Bishop got the heat blazing, so it's getting ready to be sweaty hot here in just a moment. But I want you to stand. We're going to pray. I don't believe in just like traditional Sunday afternoon services. We all could have been doing something else other than this, but we decided to press out to the house of God to see what the Lord would say and would do uh, amongst us this afternoon. And so we're going to pray. We are not going to pray as a formality. We're not going to pray to pass the time to do something to get ready for praise and worship. But we are going to on purpose intensely pray and intercede that God will open up heaven over us so that what he wants to say, what he wants to demonstrate has no blockage. Say amen. And so Gates of Refuge, y'all already know for the last couple of weeks, Bishop has instructed us to pray intensely past ourselves anytime we come together in a corporate anointing to really pray, not to let the leader do all the praying. But those of you who have been tasked in your own individual ministries as prayer warriors and intercessors, we want you to engage your spirit. If you sing, if you do anything in the service Tonight, we want you to use your prayer strength and help us open up a place in the spirit so that God can have his way this, this evening. Are you ready? Let's do it. Father, in Jesus' name, first of all, we thank you. We've come tonight to give you all of the praise, all of the glory. Come on. De la la all of the honor. We come before your presence acknowledging you. Your word says that he that cometh to God must first come believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek you so father this evening we pray come on we put a demand tonight on the heavens that you would send the holy ghost father we pray tonight that your spirit would come spirit of god we're asking you to draw us tonight spirit of god we're asking you to send a move of your spirit tonight we will accept nothing but the flow of the spirit and so right now we pray in the spirit come on church father we pray tonight come on we come with no agenda we come with no formality but we want to see your power move oh come on church Come on, let's put some intensity on it. We put a demand on the spirit tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way. Come on, Holy Ghost, have your way. Come on. Come on, we pray this night. Come on, open your mouth. We give you the glory that there will be no flesh that would glory in your sight we come against every distraction that would stop the flow of the spirit we come against every opposing force that would stop the word father we pray tonight with word is preached it would come forth with power hey come on father we thank you tonight that when the worshipers worship that heaven we we'll respond. Hey, we declare that when we sing, that heaven and the angels would join in with our worship. Whoa. Come on, somebody say, have your way. Come on, three more minutes. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. I said, pray in the Holy Ghost. We have not come for a program, but we came to experience Jesus. 
Come on, church. Come on, church. We didn't come for formality. We want to see heaven move. And so, Father, right now, let healing happen. There's still a remnant, Father, that believes that you still are the healer. Let deliverance happen tonight. Come on, just two more minutes. Come on, we're not casual tonight. We don't want casuality. But we want an outpour. Move by your spirit tonight. Move by your spirit tonight. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you that blinded eyes will open. We thank you that if there's anybody sick in here, they're leaving healed. Ay, 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 ay. Come on, we put a demand. Come on, 30 more seconds. We put a demand on heaven. We thank you tonight that our being here is not in vain. We declare that it is so. That everything that you want to do tonight, somebody shout, have your way. Come on, church, somebody say, have your way. Now listen. We Pentecostal folk, we believe in the Holy Ghost, is that right? Is that right? If we're going to have a true experience in God, then that means that we all have to do the same thing at the same time. We got many different churches in the building, many different sides of town, but we all have one thing in common and that is Jesus. I don't hear nobody in here. I said we all have Jesus in common. And so we must cooperate with what he wants to do in here. We've all got to do the same thing. Somebody's at the same time. So on the count of three, we're going to praise him. We're going to lift up a shout of praise to the Lord and we're moving on in this service. I hope y'all didn't come to be reserved. I hope y'all didn't come just to show physical support. But I want you to get engaged. Look at you and say, get engaged. We didn't drive all the way out here just to look. But we came to see what God wants to do. And so that means we're going to have to put something in it. Y'all ready? On the count of three, we're going to give God a loud shabak of praise. One, two, three. Let's praise it. Come on, praise him for one minute straight. Come on, let's lift up our praise. For who he is. All for that you've done. We pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, y'all, clap your hands out over the building. I don't know what y'all came to do. I know it's a four o'clock service, but God is worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all, shake yourself loose. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, shake yourself. Come on, it be worthy. Come on and shout hallelujah. We glorify you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now we lift you up. Come on, y'all, smile. We're there ready to see with y'all smile. It's a beautiful day. Did you wake you up this morning? Did you stop you on your way? Y'all ready, Rocco? Let's go. This song is an easy song. All it says, my help is in the name of the Lord. Can y'all sing it with us? Can y'all sing it with us? Come on. Y'all ain't rocking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Come on, y'all. One more time. Come on. Come on. Oh, the Lord, oh, the Lord, I'll die in my 
seem to come on but before they sing they can come on and get in place at this time apostle bill and lisa davis are here we have to have them have words can y'all say amen for them come on say amen from for a vision we were with them was it two fridays ago two friday nights ago we had a time with them say amen for them celebrate 24 years and for some that's a lifetime but we thank God that is a long time 
to be in service with God's people. Let me put it like that. So I want to just encourage you to keep moving forward. The best is yet to come. And I'm going to turn it over to Apostle Bill. Amen. She said 24 years. I thought you started in the last millennium, huh? <laughs> Amen. Congratulations. It's good to be here at Gates. We celebrate you in your new place. Amen. This is lovely. Somebody said, I like to see God bless my neighbor because I know he's in my neighborhood. Amen. So Bishop, First Lady, Pastor, we are so glad to be here with you. Apostles, we love you. You know, the Bible says it's good when we can come together in fellowship. And it's not about any agenda. It's not about any church. We, we put our church names to the side and we just come and fellowship and love on each other. Amen. So we're glad to be here with you, Gates of Refuge, and we're looking forward to blessing you. Amen. Congratulations. today I don't hear nobody talking back to me do you love him on today has he been amazing to you so if y'all don't mind just step into our world as we worship the king of kings the lord of lords we want him to understand from our lips how much we love him how much we appreciate him how much we're grateful for all that he has done just for us.
sacrifice for me Way back on Calvary That's why I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name hey, That's why my, my heart is filled with praise Amen for them. Come on, say amen for them. Amen. Uh, okay, so Refuge, get ready. We're getting ready to put the word up in just a moment, but I want to acknowledge every pastor that is in the room. Will you thank God for every pastor that came out? You know, pastors, this is a work day for pastors, and so for y'all to come and celebrate with us again, every guest, we are glad to have you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being here. Okay, so Riffy, y'all gonna do one more worship song and then we're gonna put the man of God up. We have Apostle Milford Carter uh, all the way from uh, Sanctuary Evangelistic Church. 
we love y'all to death we love y'all to life and we're so glad that you brought all the church with you listen i want to give a um, space for pastor ken johnson you got to come and say something to us man of god it just wouldn't be right to have you in the building say man for pastor ken praise the lord everybody come on lift your voice up in this place come on you can do better than that hallelujah man what an honor to be in the house on today with my brother-in-law came to celebrate amen an incredible prophet uh he has prophetically spoken words of life into me on many occasions just want you to know man i love you it's an honor to be out here church is beautiful we know the best is yet to come but just want you to know, man, we love you. We family for life. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And that's my dad right there, Apostle. Come on, just tear the church up in Jesus' name. Come on, do it for the glory of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for all Say 
consuming fire. Come in, God, all right, battle. We need you. We need you. Begin to call on them right now. We need you. God, we need you to step in this place. We need you. For the word now. Come on, just give God a wave offering. Hey! Come on, just give God a wave offering. Lord, you've been good. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, just give God a wave offering. Lord, you've been good. Good to us. Hey! Lord, you've been good to us. Come on, 30 more seconds. Hey! Praise you, Lord. Come on, wait. Praise you, Lord. Lord, you're good. Come on, right there. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good to us. Hey! Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Mercy endureth forever. Lord, you're good. 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 Come on, thirty more seconds. Lord, you're good. 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 Come on. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Lord, Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. Father, we thank you. We thank you that the atmosphere is ready for the word. I give you glory. Can you stand on your feet as we prepare for the word? I know just one more time. Stand to your feet. Then we honor the vessel that is bringing the gospel tonight. Father, lift your hands. Father, we thank you that whatever you want to do in this room, we give you praise that there is a free, free flow of the Spirit that hearts and minds are ready to receive whatever you would have to say to this body tonight. We thank you and we give you praise for it. Say amen. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Amen. Apostle Milford Carter.
Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you today. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We confess that you are God. There is none like you. You are eternal, forever enthroned, and unapproachable life. So we magnify you this day, Father. We thank you, thank you, thank you for this moment. Thank you, God, for the angels of this house, for those who are gathered today. We pray that your anointing flows freely, God. We thank in advance for what you're going to do. Bless this house, O oh God. This is our prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. And they all said, Amen. Come on, one more time. They all said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. It is a singular pleasure to be here with you today. Thank God for this opportunity. It is an honor to be with you in this celebration of your 24th anniversary. 24 is a long time. Somebody counted you out in the 24 hour, but you're still here. Someone said he wouldn't make it, but you're still here. Someone said too much is coming your way, and you're still here. Because God is a good God. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen? I had the opportunity to deal with Bishop, then Apostle Calvin Johnson. And I have noticed that God deals with us in a circuitous manner. I met, if you'll allow me just a little bit of time, I'm going to preach about 10 minutes, and I'm going to uh, talk about five minutes. 10 minutes. We're going to call it done. Amen? All right. I met, I met Bishop Calvin Johnson. As I said, it's amazing how God moves in a circuitous route. In 1982, uh, myself and two partners purchased property in the Apache Circle area. Many of you here will know about the Apache Circle. Uh, we purchased from the R.J. Pleasant Trust, uh, the triangle building that is now um, Janet's uh, restaurant and the local dope house. It's all right. Uh, we also purchased the supermarket, which is now uh, Praise Center Church. And we also purchased the gas station in that same triplex, which is now Dope House 2. So in 1982, we purchased that. But in 1983, the oil market crashed, and we lost the entirety of it. But in that same area, in the same triangle building, was located the gates of refuge. And I was traveling one day uh, at 71st, and I'm saying the circuitous nature of God. I was traveling at 71st and Memorial, and I met a young man in his clothing store, who was on his way to Cleveland, back to Cleveland. He wasn't certain that he was on his way back to Cleveland, but he was on his way in the providential nature of God back to Cleveland. But he had an assignment to introduce me to Bishop. Now, he introduced me to Bishop 
after he had met the love of his life, Carrie, amen? So while I was involved with him, got to know him, we clicked, he became a son. He introduced me to Pastor Calvin. We went to Panera's Bread, whatever it was, we went to Panera's Bread, and God just began to deal with us and do some things to us. So I, I, I met the bishop, and I noticed some things about the bishop instantly. Before I go to in, any further, let me first, before I mess up, acknowledge the other dignitaries here. Uh, I want to acknowledge all of the pastors. I may not know you all, but I want to uh, 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 acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge the Apostles Davis. God bless you, amen. Long, long time, friends. And also, I see the other pastor, Bishop, um, help me with the name again, I'm sorry. Brown, Brown, God bless you, amen. Good to see you here, and whoever it else is that I may have mentioned or uh, missed, God bless you. But at any rate, um, I was there, and I noticed some things about the apostle instantly. They became readily apparent. One of the things I noticed is he has a penchant towards being extravagant. No, 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 no. He, he has a penchant to be extravagant. He doesn't just wear boots. He wears those boots, amen? Uh, uh, he, he is extravagant in his dress. Amen. He was extravagant in the cars that he drove. He was extravagant in the houses that he lived in. And that's okay because that makes him a lot like God. To wit, I transcend to my title for today's message, The Extravagant Nature of God. The Extravagant nature of God. In 1 Kings, 3rd chapter, 1 Kings, 3rd chapter, verses 3 to 5, we have this reading from the NLT. It says, Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father David except Solomon too offered sacrifices and burned incense at the local places of worship. This is not an indictment of Solomon. It's just that the temple wasn't built yet and many people offered sacrifices at local, local situations rather than at the house of the God or one location. It said the most important of these places of worship was at Gibeon. So the king went there and sacrificed one thousand burnt offerings. One thousand burnt offerings. That night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. The extravagant nature of God. Here in the third chapter of Book of First Kings, we have the story of God's encounter or conversation with the young king, the new king, Solomon. Um, God came to him after he had made tremendous sacrifices, 1,000 burnt offerings. Bible students here today, you all are familiar with this story. God comes to Solomon in a dream, and he tells him that he is pleased with the offerings, and as the new head of the titular head of his earthly government, he says, I'm happy with what you've done. Ask what you will, you can have it. A blank check. Heart blunt. Ask whatever you will. Now, if you ask me what you want, there are limits that you will reach very quickly. But if you ask God, when God says anything, 
Oh, don't you ever come to me like that. Amen. You know the story. The young man didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for the life of his enemies. But he asked for the wisdom to govern God's people. He, he asked for the wisdom to govern God's people. Here he is, given the opportunity to ask the creator, the God of the universe, the king of heaven, to ask anything. And he asked for wisdom to lead God's people, the people to whom he has been given charge. My God. The response, please God. And we want to please God, amen? Because when a man's ways please God, he makes even his enemies. The man pleased God with his response. He decided what he would ask for. And God said, listen, because you'll please me, I'm going to give you what you ask for. But here is the extravagance of God. Not only am I going to give you what you asked for, but I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you wealth like no man has ever seen in the world before. I'm going to give you wisdom that excels all other men on the planet. My God, today, there have been some, there have been some very wealthy men that will walk this planet. Can I give you, Pastor Ken, just a real quick roll call? Some of the top, top. Coming in near the top but not there, we have Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was a shipping magnet. He built ships, he cornered the market, and he amassed a fortune of $185 billion back then. $185 billion. That Ford car you drive, that found on rail dead, no, I'm sorry, that Ford car that you drive amassed Ford $200 billion. Tsar Nicholas of Russia puts Putin to shame because he was worth $300 billion. Dollars. Dale Carnegie, three hundred and ten billion. Mansa Mensa, the tenth Mansa, King of Kings. That's what that means. Was worth anywhere from four hundred to six hundred billion dollars. He was so rich that he submerged economies when his troop came through. He turned gold so inexpensive that they just tossed it around. It, he submerged whole economies because he was that rich. And there's Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller. You know it. Founder of Standard Oil. Amassed $665 billion. But all of those pale in significance to Solomon. Because when God puts his stamp, he's going to make sure that there's so far a distance between you and everybody else that there is no comparison. Why? Because he is extravagant. And his nature is to be extravagant. Solomon, son of David, was worth $2.2 trillion. Wait a minute, you don't understand. That's a 12 with 12 zeros behind it. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Somebody say he's extravagant. Say he's extravagant. Our God is extravagant. So we see that God 
is a very extravagant God, and who he blesses, he blesses in an extravagant way. The Bible says that Solomon had wealth. Now, I, I, I'm taking my time. I told you about 10 minutes, and, and I'm preaching hard right now. I really am. Oh, oh, this is what God has tasked me to do. God wants you to know who you are and where he wants you to live. He can give them billions upon billions. Why are you? Okay, I'm going to keep on going. The Bible says that God gave Solomon a wealth that dwarfed any other man's wealth in the world that lived before him or after him. Richest person in our history. And he reigned for 40 years. I want, to get, I want you to get this. He reigned for 40 years. And every year, he got gold. Can I tell you how much gold he got, Pastor Ken? I ain't going to tell you. I'm going to tell this. I'm going to tell the apostle. Apostle, don't tell Pastor, Pastor Ken. Every year, he got 25 tons of gold. And that's every year. And he reigned for 40 years. And if, and if gold goes at conservatively $2,000 a troy ounce, come on, somebody. This is, this is what God, <laughs> leave your calculators alone. Don't make your calculators throw up the east side all over this place. King Solomon's throne was coated in gold, inlaid with ivory, had six stairs, 12 solid gold lion Statues, one on each side of the six steps. Two larger lion statues. All the goblets and household articles in Solomon's palace were pure gold. Why? Because he did not allow silver in the house. He made silver so expensive, the Bible says that silver was accounted as rocks. What do you do with a rock? I wonder, is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? After tremendous sacrifices, thousand burnt offerings, God comes to the young king and he speaks to him. He talks to him about who he is, what he will be. So Solomon has inherited the wealth of his father, David. But there is no temple. So Solomon determines that he is going to build a house for God. It takes him seven years. Seven years to build this house. And the house is so full of gold ornamentation that they said the house itself is worth nearly a trillion dollars. Just, just the house. Why, apostle, are you going through all this? I could go through all the list of all the materials used and everything, but I, that's not the point. What I want to get you to understand is that God loves to be extravagant and has no problem with you being opulent. As a matter of fact, you reflect God's glory when you got it going on like that. No man wants 
her children as his reflection. It does not matter where you come from. Solomon is the son of David. David gets himself in trouble because he has an illicit affair with another man's wife. It wasn't a clean little hush-hush. It was the most scandalous, treacherous. It ended in the murder of two people, the man and the child. But God is rich in his great love wherewith he loves God is extravagant in his mercy and the same man because he humbled himself because he confessed openly God never took his hand off of his life. He did not remove him from office. Come on, somebody. I'm speaking to somebody who has some mind that needs to be adjusted. He did not remove him from office. He did not take away his anointing. And he turned around and blessed him at a level so that his generation continues. And he said, as long as your generation follows you, there shall never cease to be a man on the throne. I'm almost done. So there, how does David, how does God bless Solomon at this level? How, how does God transfer the money from everywhere else into this man's hands? Two primary ways. I could talk about the taxation because he levied heavy taxes on uh, all of those people who are around, that's forced labor. He had a lot of that. He inherited, as I said, the money from his father, David. But there are two primary ways that I want to talk about. Number one, the first thing, he did it because of his providential nature. Providential. It means occurring at a favorable time. See, with God, timing is everything. You, you've been trying to get someplace, trying to do something, and you keep running into roadblock. It's not that God doesn't want you to have it. It's just that the fullness of time has not come. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. He was the son slain before the foundation of the world, but it was only in the fullness of time. Timing is everything. You can do the right thing at the wrong time. All things lawful are not expedient. So the providential nature of God means, first of all, the right time. Secondly, it means divine foresight and intervention. God literally Change the flow of currency, of money, of everything into the hands and to the coffers of the man Solomon. It was divine. It wasn't that he knew how, had connection. It was divine. There are some things that you can only get because God gives them to you. Have you ever, have you ever looked at people? You went, how in the world? did Bill Davis get such a beautiful wife? No, I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's divine. It's divine. It's just divine. Oh, he's a handsome brother, but it's divine. All right? Okay, here's my serious point. No. It's divine. God can move things into your possession that you could never acquire in your own abilities. Amen? So it's the providential nature of God. When God spoke the word into existence, he cut a contract with Solomon. He said, listen, you asked, I'm going to deliver. You said it, now watch me do it. God says, is there anything to hard? See, the problem is we limit God. It's not that God can't. It's that we don't. God is a good God all the time. Amen. And God is a 
provincial God. His, it's in his name, Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who provides. He will provide, amen. Never short of a word, if it's a word. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Our God is extravagant. If you don't believe so, take a look at the house that God built as a tabernacle. It is a reflection of what goes on in heaven. An absolute reflection. So God, God says streets are made of gold, walls of jasper, all these other things are going on. It's because of how God does what he does. Amen. Now, God has moved us into a point for us to understand things have shifted in our dimension. That there have been shifts in our dimension. And there will be people who are wise enough to take advantage of the shift. And there will be others who watch and complain about what is happening and say it doesn't take all that. But this is what I found in life. You generally hit what you shoot for. Amen. So if you, if you don't have a desire to shoot for higher and more, do not have a problem when your neighbor does. Amen. Amen. The second point, after the providential nature of God, is the patronage. He made it through patronage. Solomon became what he was by patronage. If you'll go back, fourth chapter, third chapter, you'll read that Solomon had 12 patrons. 12 patrons. They were responsible, each one of them, hint, Selah, each one was responsible for a month. John, anyway, everybody responsible for a month, 12 patrons. He didn't choose Joe Fluky. He chose those who were going somewhere, had something that he could trust them with because it was his to speak something into their life. He simply decreed and declared. And they, listen, they became governors, but they were patrons. Now, if you go back and do the, the, the work, I did the calculation. Each one of them, it's the truth, each one of them was responsible for roughly a billion dollars a month. Wait a minute. <laughs> you need 12, bro. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't understand. Two things you don't understand. Number one, that means Solomon's monthly expenditures. He ain't living close to the edge. He ain't living near the bone. He's living large and in charge. He's got stables. He's got each one is responsible. Now, here's the second thing. If I can afford to give you a billion, if I can afford to give you a billion, what I got? <laughs> what I got? So here's the situation. God chose these 12 men because they would be faithful in what God was going to do. And God did something in their life that affected them greatly. I was recently in Oklahoma City. My son and I had been talking about this patronage, these 12, these 12 men that Solomon, Solomon was blessed by. When I got to Oklahoma City, Dr. Cindy Trim, you, many of you know her, was there talking, and uh, she did something I'm not going to do. I'm going to do it a little bit differently, if you'll allow me. But she said, first of all, she told him, she said, everybody, give me, give me the biggest bill you got in your wallet. Bring it here. Let's give it to me. They brought it up there. Right? You were there. Gave her the, the biggest bill. We gave her the biggest bill. Mom had a 20. I think that's what we had. Gave her a 20. She said, it's great. Put it in my hand. She received the $20 from, uh, or whatever it was from everybody. She said, no, this is great. She said, this is general. She said, but patrons operate at a different level. See, patrons operate at a different level. Patrons operate at a level that moves them 
over into the to the glory realm of God at a different level. Now, somebody's going to leave, leave here missing what I'm saying, but I'm telling you. What she, so she said, I want to tell you, she said, this is what, this is what people do. Anybody in here can give me their highest dollar. But a patron is someone who looks into the life of this individual and said, I believe God. I believe God has his hand on your life. I believe that God is going to do exactly what he said. And you begin to become a partner. So you partner in the blessing of the man. There is a reciprocal effect. The blessing that he receives, you receive. So she said, listen, she said, patrons don't balk at $1,000. Patrons don't get scared because you ask for a thousand dollars. Let me tell you something. When I first joined the church, if they asked me for a dollar, I was like, a whole dollar? <laughs> I, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up in church. I grew up, you know, with people in the street and like, you're running some strong game, player, uh, you know. But God touched my heart. He saved me. And when he saved me, I'm all in or I'm not in. I'm all in or I'm not in. And I don't love money. I love God. I love God. So they said, this is what you do. And there were times, there have been many times when people would ask, they would say, give $500, give $1,000. And it was my last $500. It was a thousand that I did not have, but I believed God. I was in, I was in Memphis at Carnes, Carnes meeting. And we were there and he asked people, what was a thousand dollars? And I said, okay, no problem. I believe God. Went up to the thing. I got up to the thing now. I'm just walking. I got up to, the, to, to him. He walked up to me. He knows me. He's been to our church a number of times. He, told me, he said, stop worrying about that church. God going to give you a new one. I ain't asking him nothing about a church. I ain't, he didn't know, but we were struggling. We were, we were dealing with stuff that you wouldn't know. Many, let me, I, I, since we're here, I want to be transparent with you. I want you to know how far you can go and fall, and yet God still has you. So I'm there in my church. I'm in my church. We've had three church splits. The roof has been flooded. The insurance illegally voided their ability to pay my contract. I've had, uh, was, what was it, $300,000 worth of damage to the facility. My insurance was worth $3.4 They would not pay a dime. The owners of my loan began to Get into, Elder Brown, raise your hand. Is, is every word I say true? Every word I say, they began to work together because they saw the value of my property at 5th and Peoria. And they said we can get it for a, a, a dime. And they came to my office three or four times. The last time, the guy, they sent the big dog to my church. He walked in, he said, listen. We know you're in financial trouble. How you know? If you had not plowed with my, if you, <laughs> you hadn't talked to my banker, you wouldn't know nothing. nothing. So he came over there. He says, listen, we know you're in trouble. We know they foreclosed on you. You ain't got time. He said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I told you. How much did I tell you my insurance was worth? I'm going to give you $70,000. You take this $70,000 and get on down the road and try to start yourself. He talking to me. Now, Pastor Ken, I'm saved, but I ain't safe. You, you might ought to be careful how you talking to me. Because you picking the kind of cotton to get your hundred quick. any rate, now I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, everything I said, as a young man right over there, you were in the office when he said $70,000. I said, I said, I said, I'm not here because you called me here. I'm here because God called me here. And the only one 
who can move me from here is the God who sent me here. Next time we see you, it's going to be different. Now, I'm talking loud, but I know we're in foreclosure. I'm telling you, tell you the truth, we're in foreclosure. And most of you don't know what a sheriff's cell is. A sheriff's cell is when they come and put a padlock on your front door, and they have a sale of your property down at the courthouse, and it's gone. The next day, it comes down to the point where the next day they're coming with the padlock. The next day. Not, I'm going to give you six months to get this right. So I've been talking. What's that, Elder? 7 a.m. That's right. That's what time they were going to show up. Now, I've been talking with an attorney, and we didn't have money, we didn't have anything, but I was talking to this attorney working, and uh, turns out, Turning was my next door neighbor, turned out to be a blessing. He, he said, look, Jerry was his name. I dealt with three Jerry's, three Jerry's in this process. All of, all, every one of them was named Jerry. This Jerry said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to take care of it. Now, he told me this about two weeks ahead of time. I said, okay. One week went by. Jerry? <laughs> Five days left. Oh, Jerry. So the day before, I said, Jerry, what's going on? He said, don't worry about it. I said, Jerry. He said, he said, he said, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm waiting till 1155 to file a petition in the United States District Court. 1155, he signed the petition. The next morning, they thought they was going to have a sheriff's sale. They got the petition that said it's a state. They're going to court. We went to court. I had, Jerry said, this is as far as I can take you. Got to find somebody else from here. So I found my second Jerry. My second Jerry said, listen, you're asking me to do something that's never been done before. He said, it ain't never, ever been done before. But if you're willing, I'll go with you. Jerry goes into the U.S. Listen, I, I found out something. There are a few things on this planet as powerful as, as a United States District Judge. If that brother say, you going. Boy, they walked in. I walked in. We had been work. We worked for about a month to get. The, the thing that I must say is that man right there kept meticulous records, absolutely meticulous records. So when we went to talk to Jerry, they worked up everything they needed for our presentation. We went in to talk to the court, and then this, this took uh, several months over a period of time that we, we were in front of the, the judge. And we're there. I'm hurrying. I said it would take five minutes. Uh, <laughs> so I went in. I went in. We, we ain't got, I got no money. I go in with my one little attorney, Jerry. They got Bank of Oklahoma attorneys. They got Indian attorneys. They got other attorneys. They got all these attorneys against little old me sitting over here, me and Jerry. Can I tell you, Jerry put a whooping on their tail. <laughs> Can I tell you, Jerry whooped them left, right, and sideways. And when it was all over, the judge and, 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 and the, the attorney, they tried to get riled up and get mad. The, the, the judge said, listen, do I have to remind you who I am and where you are? Brother, when they make them put their tails between them, I said, okay. So he came back. He said, I'm going to do something. That's never been done before. He said, this has now become a precedent-setting case. The first that it has ever occurred, he said, I'm going to make the bank rescind their statement, give you time to get another loan in place, and they're going to do everything they do to carry it, make you whole again. Let you go ahead and do what you got to do. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the good part. The good part, the good part 
is old big dog got to come back and see me again now. Old big dog got to come in. He said, can't we just be friends? Can't we just forget about that man? I said, oh, we can be friends, but we can't never forget about this, brother. We can't never forget about this. They moved big dog out of the way. They got a new young negotiator who came in. And when he came in, I said, he, I said, listen. I, I mean, he said, listen, I don't, let's not even say his name. He said, I don't even want to bring his stuff up again. He said, all I need to do is tell you that this is what we prepared to do. <laughs> I said, well, all right. My son, my son was there. My son was there. Elder Brown was there. I said, and the zeros keep coming. I said, okay. Long story short, they gave me more than we ever dreamed that we would get. I mean, they really did. They, they, it, was, it was a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. Because our God is an extravagant God. And because we believe God more than circumstances, and we've always honored God. Shortly after that, I am closing. I am closing. I'm closing. I'm closing, Apostle. Seriously. Shortly after that, an apostle friend of mine. God blessed us. God blessed us tremendously, tremendously. We bought a church. We revamped the whole church. Uh, went through the entire, from top to bottom. Most people don't know it's a two-story uh, church worth about a million five. What we've done, worth every penny paid for, not a dime owed. Don't own, don't own dimes on houses, and God bless us. But an apostle, apostle friend of mine walked up to me one day, and he said something that took me totally off guard. See, I've got a church full of givers. I, I, I've got some people who know how to give, but the church exists because of a vision. God gives a vision. But there is no vision without a visionary. It's the visionary who carries the vision. So my apostolic friend walked up to me, my apostle friend walked up to me and he said, he said, that's why you always give up, get up and give those big offerings in church. I never thought about it for a second. I've never given it a consideration. I'm zoned in to what's being said and believe in God, not knowing that people are watching. And they're getting an idea. It's the wrong idea. If you're giving for your own selfish glory and aggrandizement, you missed everything. But if you know that he is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, if you are the one who knows that God will show up and show out, he'll come in. Listen, I was there in Oklahoma City. The woman asked for us to be whoever wanted to be a patron to stand up. I probably was the first one in line because I just know God, listen, you can't ever be God-given. And there are some supernatural movements in time when God is doing something specifically large. So I went in. $1,000. Do you know that before the week was over, that was on a Thursday or Friday. Was it, that was a Thursday? Thursday, someone met me in my office and said, here, this is what God told me to give you. My $1,000 back. Just like that. Just like that. My daughter. My daughter was there at the same place, gave thousand dollars, cause we just believe God. I teach them. To, I teach them to give. You can never out give. There's nobody who's come through my church, and we're not. People don't come to my church to stay forever. Sometimes God elevates and goes, but every last one of them learn about giving. My daughter went through that church. She went, and she says, "I'm a patron too." She gave thousand. Listen, 
How many contracts did you get before the week? Was how many contracts? Two contracts. Three contracts. Well worth over the thousand. There are times when God is moving. And God has something channeled. You don't understand the bigger picture. Do you think everybody who saw Solomon knew their role was to support Solomon to become the way? No, they didn't know that. They were just obeying God and becoming a patron. And as a result, God blessed them. Tonight, I came to preach, to shift your mind, to make you understand. Time is not your issue. Since I last met you, since I was last at this church, there have been a number of things that have happened to me. When COVID happened, we didn't go anywhere for two years. We closed the church down, basically, right? Two years. Um, opened it up, and had to close it right back down again in the two-year period. Uh, so we didn't go anywhere. So I didn't go anywhere. The first time I went to a service, Apostle Layla Caldwell's church. I was just going there, sat on the front row. The guy, I'm, was anybody here that night? I don't know. Maybe you weren't. I know you were, but uh, was somebody else? Were you here? Oh, yeah, y'all kids. Y'all, I mean, y'all are my, y'all, y'all my family. Y'all are my kids is what I mean. They might not believe you. <laughs> but I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there on the front row, and the man did this. What is sanctuary? So what is sanctuary? Who is the pastor of sanctuary? What is going on at sanctuary? He said, in the back of your house, there's a patio that you sit down. It ain't my anniversary. It's his anniversary. It's her anniversary. Preach to her. Talk to her. I guarantee he spent most of the night talking to me. This is in September. September 22. He says to me, I am quitting. I guarantee I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. He says to me, he says to me, God says, if you'll sit out on your patio, that patio that I described, for the next six weeks, whatever you can ask of God, God will do it. So, he says, you need to get still and sit there if he had only not said be still, if he just said sit there for a little while, but I'm not a still person, so I couldn't be still. So I'm driving, I'm driving to church a month later, Wednesday night, going to church, 75 miles an hour going down 151st Street, four deer jump out in front of my car. Jump out in front of my car. Two nine and eleven point bucks and four and, and two does. They came from nowhere. They came so fast I couldn't move. My daughter, Nicole, was in the front seat with me. And uh, you know, I hit that deer doing 65, 70 miles an hour. Hit him square in the front of the that car. And I'm driving a Range Rover, a big heavy car. Hit him square, the whole front end of that middle cave, right, boom. Just like somebody hit, took a sledgehammer and packed it. The whole car jumped straight up off the ground. Airbags deployed. Now, I'm going 65, 70 miles, and everything electrical is like an EMP hit it. All electrical shut down. Well, there are still cars coming behind me at 70 miles an hour that don't know because I just knocked this deer 70 feet, 100 feet down the road. And I'm there wrestling like everything, trying to get myself out of the road because they're coming over the hill. My daughter, <laughs> because, because there's dust in the car going everywhere and she can't see, she said, oh God, the deer that killed my daddy, he ain't saying <laughs> So, so I'm wrestling to get that. I finally got over there and they came on. It's gone. That was like, that's it, total. God said, be still. 
still going. On December the 20th, on December the 20th, I have that man, same man, Elder Brown. Anyway, Elder Brown, <laughs> Elder Brown is, I, I don't know what I would have done without him. He's, he's been my man every step of the way. But anyway, we're having a problem with our AC units, and we have two big, big um, walk-in type units on top of the, uh, the building. And we've got a guy who's coming, who's come up there to, to take care of it. Now, if you look back in your almanac or whatever, December the 20th was cold. It was five degrees and falling. It was cold. So I called the guy. He got up there, and they were on top of the roof. So I said, I'm going to get on top of the roof because, you know, I just want to see what's going on. Now, I've been on that roof a thousand times. I've been on a ladder a thousand times. Now I'm on this ladder, and I don't know what happened. Somebody says, were you trying to change light bulbs? No, I wasn't trying to change no light bulbs. I was going to check things out. Brother Bess, I'm on top of the roof. I'm going to, I put my hand, you know how you put your hand to, on top of the roof to step off the ladder and step on top? And to this day, I have no memory of falling. No memory. No memory. Now, I fell 20, 25 feet, whatever that is, on concrete. Just, it's totally paved concrete. Now, the doctor said, if you had leaned forward or leaned backwards and tilted one way and hit flat either way, They've been pushing up roses on you right now. But I got to tell you what happened. Now, it takes a fraction of a second to fall from the roof to the ground. But I fell out of time into eternity. I fell out of time to where time stopped altogether. And I was standing there in time, out of time, watching everything going on. I saw the ladder just doing this in the air, going back, going back like this. And I turned around and I knew God was there because I was having a conversation with him. I said, oh my goodness, what, am I falling? Because I didn't know I was falling. I said, am I falling? There's the ladder over there. And... Uh, then I said, two questions. I said, am I falling? The next question I asked, how bad is this going to? I never, never got that word out before I hit the ground. Back then I was conscious again. But let me tell you, when I fell from, see, I have a totally different concept of time and eternity now. Totally different. Totally different. I, I could have been to every planet in the solar system and the galaxy and everything and back in the time I took to fail because I was out of time. There is no time. Time is a construct for us in this dimension. There is no time in eternity. So I was out of time in eternity and God was speaking to me and I was there. I was just going on and God showed me. He said, I got you. Now I hit the ground. When I hit the ground, I was instantly back in my body. But I still wasn't hurting. I thought I'd knock the wind out of me. That's all I thought. I said, knock the wind out of myself. But see, I fell in the corner of the building where nobody could see me. Nobody knew I was down there. But the woman behind the street, the street behind me, came out on the porch. She said, what did she say? What is that explosion? So what is that explosion? And they on the building had no idea that I was down below. They said, what explosion? She said, I just heard an explosion. She walked over and she saw me lying on the ground. I had been calling them, but nobody could hear me. And she saw me, and she said, who's that on the ground? They walked over to the edge and said, oh, my God, that's the apostle. But they can't get off the roof because the ladder is gone. So this woman, 25-foot ladder, comes over here and picks up this ladder. It was a feat to do that, I thought, and put it up there, and they, they scamper down. They say to me, apostle, apostle, I said, I'm okay. Just get me in the church. I'm okay. I wasn't being spiritual. I was cold. I said, I'm a cold. Just get me in the church. 
I had no idea what they were seeing. They were seeing broke leg. All toes on this foot were broke. The big toe is a compound fracture. Excuse me, the gravity. It's outside the skin. It's totally outside the skin, hanging out. Uh, three fractures in my compound fractures in my back. And I'm not aware of this. I'm in shock. So I said, it's, it's nothing. They said, let's call IMSA. I said, just get me in church. That man said, apostle. <laughs> he said, I'm not about to move you. He said, you, and I said, okay, that's all right. Just give me, you better call him. Because <laughs> it wasn't moving. It wasn't moving. But I fell out of time into eternity. So I've seen eternity. I've seen it. And God, see, that's why some things, <laughs> Some things don't matter to me that they used to matter. It, that, that stuff doesn't matter. I know who God is. I know what God does. So I know the, the function. I know where we are, who we are, what we're supposed to do. Because I understand how God works and I understand my singular anointing, it's not everybody's anointing, but it's mine. It's what God called me to do. And he called me to do it by doing it myself. You know, God will do that. If you, he called Oral Roberts to be a healer after he healed Oral Roberts. Saved Benny Hinn to be a savior and do miracles because he saved him and did miracles in his life. God will often do that. So God, I told God, I said, well, God, you can... Bless me with a whole lot of money so I can be. <laughs> Listen, but God don't mind giving you money. He just don't want money to ever have you. He don't care about, he is an extravagant God. And this I'll say as I close for my final close. God will bless you according to the level of your faith and obedience. Always your faith and your obedience. And faith extends beyond your circumstances. So right now, by authority of God and what we're doing today, I want to extend to you the privilege to be a recipient of a patron's blessing. I'm not asking you for your $20. I'm not asking you for your $25. If you want to be a patron, a patron can I turn it down a little bit? A patron requires more of you. I was not a member of that woman's church, but I knew what a patron's blessing was. If I invested in Apple stock, I'm not the president of Apple. But everything that happens towards Apple happens for me. That's Apple. Amen. So I'm going to ask it this time. I'm going to ask that if you understand what I've told you, I've been very bare and raw with you. If you understand what I've told you and you want to be a recipient of a patron's blessing, I'm going to ask you for $500, if you want to be a recipient as a patron, I want you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. So I'm giving you a discount on the patron's blessing. Believe me, I am. Amen. Amen. I see 20 people 20 people with a patron's blessing. Now I see people standing. That's all right, just hold those, hold those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come here, come here. Come here. Stand right here with me. Stand right here. You know, I've seen something in life. I've seen, listen, 
Can I turn that down just a little bit? Can I turn it down? Okay. Still a little bit of love, Lord. I've seen, I've seen men and women labor and give their lives. And then people who they're not even under outdo them. I'm just going to be blunt. I don't see a whole lot of gates people standing up. I just don't. I know what that's like, Apostle. I know what it's like to, to have your anniversary and people that you prayed for, spoke words over, caused them to... All of a sudden, they got other agendas. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. I need 20 people. If that's you, come up here. Come up here. I want to count you off. One as the number one stunner right there. There you go. Come on. Get in line. Get in line. I know there are 20. God told me. God told me. God told me. If you knew the blessing, if you knew the blessing, those are givers right there. I know those two are givers. Yeah, they used to be mine, but they still give. Amen. Glory to God. That's all right. I ain't mad. I don't know nothing. I don't own a thing. God owns it everything. Amen? All right, all right. Count them out for me. Count them out. All right. I see you. I see you. Count them off. I can't hear you. Count. Five. Okay. How many? 14. That's 15. Where's 15? There's 15. There's five more. Five more. Five more. Five more. I know you're in here. I know. Come on, six. Come on, six. I see you. Here's six coming right here. Come on. Who's this? Who's this back here? There's seven. Come on. So I was leaving. Three more. Is that three more? Three more. Three. Come on. Here's one. Oh, don't, don't miss it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Don't play games. I don't play games. I see you. I see you. There you go. There you go. There you go. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Did I get everybody? Did I get everybody? That's 20. That's 20. Huh? That's 20. Okay, stand right there. Now, you couldn't give. You couldn't give that. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Let me tell you. You can still get a blessing. You can still get a blessing. This is what I want you to do. For as many who have $100, stand to your feet right now. Go ahead, stand to your feet. $100. Now I want you who are bringing $100. How you take money? First, first. Any way you want it. Any way you want it, any way. Okay. Any way you need.
right, let's bless the Lord. That woman's a giver right there. That woman's a giver. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please, if you have any ability to stay, do not leave before the benediction. Do not leave before the benediction. Hallelujah. Listen, while they are finishing, if you did not get a chance to give in one of these lines, please bless the man and woman of God. You can come down and bring your offering right now, whatever it is. Come on, bring it on down. If you didn't get a chance to give, come on and bring your offering down right now. Hallelujah. Bless you, young man. Bless you. Bless you. God bless God bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Lay down on it, Chris. Lay down on it, sir. <laughs> you better lay down on it, sir. Talk that talk, sir. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Can the saxophone get some? Can we get some meat? Give it up, meat. Give it up. Watch out, watch out, sir. Watch out, watch out. Can the organ player get some? God bless you. Can the organ player get some? For the organ, for the organ. What about the keyboard? What about the keyboard? Without giving the drummer some, gotta give the drummer some. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 
God, we bless you. God, we praise you. You are magnificent, God. There's nobody like you, God. You're wonderful beyond compare. You are God all by yourself. We thank you, God, for your manifold blessings. Thank you for the opportunity of coming before you, laying witness to this event, Father. These 24 years, God, we join in with the angels that bow before your throne. We magnify you, God, for the great thing that you have done. We thank you that the just is, is still living by faith, God. And we thank you that the best is yet to come. We thank you for a new anointing, a fresh anointing. We thank you that it's done for your glory. For your honor, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for everyone who sowed seed. Do it, God, for your glory and for your honor. Uh, I'm going to relinquish the microphone at this time, but before I do, I, if I could ask for the apostle, first lady, if you would come just stand right here. And I'm going to ask all the pastors, you would come, pastors, apostles, pastors and apostles, all pastors and apostles, pastors, bishops, fivefold, licensed, no bootlegs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorabata. Kiyam babaso. Pastor, pastor. Pastor, I want you to look around who's standing around you. This is nothing compared to the angels that are here in this place right now. The angels have stopped to come and give witness signature witness to this moment father in the name of jesus god we thank you for this man for this woman we thank you for lo these many years now god as the eagle has been on the ground cleaning his beak as the eagle has removed all feathers as the eagle has prepared to soar we command soar again soar again soar again higher 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 new mercies new mercies new mercies Today I sharpen you like a razor. Your prophetic voice will yet reach the corners that I have assigned. I have established your going. Your health will not fail till you have accomplished all things that I've assigned to your hands. Now you have permission to run. You have permission to run. You have permission. I cancel the lie of the enemy. The thought is canceled. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lay hands on him, church. Lay hands on him. Lay hands on him. Lay hands on him. Pray. Horabasaya. Pray. Amen. Get in. Haya Rabosa. Ho! Hey! Yaba, baba, 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 sola, baka, ye. Ora, baba, sola, baba, baba. Hey! Yaba, baba, 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 baba. Ora, baba, siyota, baba. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Much love. Much love comes your way, Apostle. Much love comes your way. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been generous in your extravagance. You poured into the lives of many. Now it returns. It comes from unexpected sources. But it comes right on time. God bless you. Somebody said thank you, Jesus. Somebody said thank you, Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a hand break. With all that has transpired, please understand that God desires, with all that we know about Solomon and the many points of gifting in his life, the third verse, I think, of the third chapter of Kings said, and Solomon loved the Lord. That's the primary thing. There may be someone here who really doesn't know God. You been around God you somehow been here today but you know that you need to make a decision that puts Christ first if you're here if you're here know that God never deals in accident he's intentional yeah he's intentional and he's always on time if you don't know Christ the pardon of your sins. Please, please, please take this time to accept Christ into your life. It's a very simple proposition. God will give you your life. He'll give you life. He'll trade it for eternal quality. Every head is bowed. If you don't know Christ and the pardon of your sins, every head bowed. Every head bowed. Every head bowed. Hallelujah. You don't know Christ. You want to know Christ. You want things to be different. I'm not going to ask you to come down. I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand right where you are. God bless you. If you don't know Christ, you don't know Christ. Repeat these simple words. Lord God, I love you. I want you to come into my life. I'm prepared to surrender all. I do surrender all. I give you my life. Come in, Jesus. Take control. I give it all to you. Now have your way. That's your prayer. God is faithful. He, he doesn't send you through a theological questionnaire. He just takes you at your heart's intent. And he'll save your soul. God bless you. Thank you for having us. This is the first time, this is the first time, I think, maybe, maybe since COVID, this may be the first time that I've preached outside of sanctuary's walls. So I am honored to be here at this special place, my son's house today. Amen. God bless you. We I thank God for Apostle Carter. A rare anointing did what, what the Lord did through him tonight. Uh, we're going to cut the floor open to let the apostle of this house say something. Yeah, say amen for him. Good evening, Apostle. I want to tell you that every time you have preached in this house you you always catch us at our end and I thank God for you what a word and uh, I will eternally be grateful for who you are and and what you are and thank you so very much for that and I thank every pastor Bill and your wife, thank you, and Carrie and Pastor Ken, I love y'all, and every preacher 
Apostle Pastor Brown, I love you, Apostle Bishop Brown, I love you. I, I just want to tell you, just g- give me a minute. I just want to tell you something. This has been a crazy year. And I don't know if y'all know, but I had a stroke in, in October about this time last year. And I often say that I, I think I, I came out to quick. I often say that. But looking back, I, I think that God wanted me to go forth because I was really, 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 really concerned about me. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you don't see nothing. I mean, I could see, but I couldn't recognize what I was looking at. I couldn't I read a, a citizen, couldn't remember what I was reading. And I'm telling you that the Lord has uh, brought me out. And I'm telling you that I, I thank God for this. And listen, I, I cannot tell y'all, uh, looking at y'all's faces and everybody that attended this service, it did my heart good. And I thank God for you. I thank you for being here. And if we can do anything for you, we're going to do that. Say amen. Pastor John, I love y'all. But I'm going to turn it back over to him now. I love you. Amen. We're going to dismiss you. Pastor Brown, will you come and say something before we leave and, and let loose us? You know you couldn't come. You, could, you couldn't come without saying something. You got to come say something. <laughs> Say amen for Pastor Brown. Amen. Pastor Brown, and then, and then dismiss us like only you can. We say praise the Lord to everyone. I, you know, I'm just blessed to be in this place. I told y'all. Lady Di, come, come on, Lady Di. I, I'm not going to hold y'all long, but Apostle, you are a blessing to me, man. I couldn't wait to get here. I heard about it. I told him I was going to bring this wonderful sister. And I just, if y'all can just be patient, just, she's so gifted as a singer. I want her to bless you all. We have not been out. We haven't been going anywhere because we're just coming back also out of the COVID. And I don't know you've ever, she's been so many places. I don't even know if you've been singing anywhere lately. And uh, she's such a great blessing. But when I heard uh, Apostle Carter was going to be here, I said, warm up the call. The Spirit of the Lord is going to be in this place. So I'm thankful for you. Man of God, I'm thankful. First Lady, Pastor Johnson, your wife, all of the elders and pastors that's here, God bless your heart. God bless you. I mean, you're talking about a queen. God bless you, Sister Carter. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decrease. And I'm going to let Lady Di sing for you all. And then may God bless you all. I'll stand and we'll just dismiss. You bless us, dear. It's been a while. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You're more than enough for me. Jehovah Rapha, God my healer, it's by your stripes I'm being made free. Jehovah Oh, 
Jehovah Jireh, my provider, you are more than enough for me. Jehovah Rapha, God, my healer, is by your stripes I'm being made free. Jehovah Shammah, God, you're with me. You'll supply my every need. You're more than enough. You are more than enough. You're more. Somebody say hallelujah. Ask you to stand to your feet. We're about to dismiss. Now, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Calvin, his wife, Pastor Johnson, his wife, Apostle Carter, First Lady Carter. Lady Brown, we thank you. Lord, we ask you to touch us as a family. Continue to send healing to our mind, body, and soul. We thank you for this opportunity to be here once again. You've blessed them for a number of years, and now they have land in this awesome sanctuary. We thank you today, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing. Speak to your people today. Make us whole every day. We be careful to give you the praise as we dismiss from this place, but not your presence. Be with us forevermore. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.